असलम एवरी वन कैसे हैं आप सब आज का हमारा टॉपिक है डिसमिनोरिया सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी डिफाइन डिसमिनोरिया एज इट इज़ पेनफुल मैंस्ट्रेशन दैट इफेक्ट आलमोस्ट फोर्टी फाइव टू नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ फीमेल इन रिप्रोडक्टिव एज ग्रुप डिसमिनोरिया डिवाइड इंटू टू टाइप्स फर्स्ट वन इज़ प्राइमरी डिसमिनोरिया एंड सेकेंड वन इज़ कैंडी डिसमिनोरिया सो प्राइमरी डिसमिनोरिया इज़ एक्चुअली द पेनफुल पीरियड सिंस ऑनसेट ऑफ मिनार्की it is not or it is almost rarely associated with any pathology so it improves after childbirth and increasing age on the other hand secondary dysmenorrhea is the painful periods that have developed over time so it is associated with pathology that includes endometriosis adenomyosis pelvic inflammatory disease and cervical stenosis Okay, now there are some questions on history and some examination that you should uh, ask and do to your patient uh, to identify either she have primary dysmenorrhea or secondary dysmenorrhea. So first of all, there is reassurance. Reassurance include that you should ask to your patient that how uh, her daily life is affected due to that pain. Either that is mild pain that does not affect her daily life routine. or she have such pain that affect her daily life uh, that disturb her sleep or her daily work uh, as she needs some uh, holidays or some off from her work or school then you should ask the severity of pain uh, that includes her, which medication she takes for that uh, pain or which thing relieves her pain then what are the time of pain as it start before menstruation or it occurs during menstruation or it occurs after menstruation so these are the questions that uh, separates the primary dysmenorrhea from secondary dysmenorrhea as the mild pain uh, during menstruation that is very normal thing or sometimes some patients have the mild pain before onset of menstruation that is also normal but if someone has severe pain that uh, starts before menstruation and long last for it that includes endometriosis and adenomyosis and if someone have the severe pain during periods that is due to cervical stenosis so after asking the question on history you should go for examination so examination include pelvic examination there are some things that you should found on your examination that includes the pathology that uh, causes the dysmenorrhea first of all there will be pelvic mass that means there is endometrioma or if there is fixed uterus that means there is adhesion and if you found endometriotic nodule that will be palpable on pouch of douglas or on uterosacral ligament if there is enlarged uterus that mean there is fibrite and if there is abnormal discharge that is uh, some different color or foul smelling or sticky discharge or have um, uh, different colors so that mean uh, she have pid okay the most important one in dysmenorrhea is red flag red flag includes three things first one is abnormal cervix that you should see on examination then second one is pelvic mass that you also found on your examination then on history you should be come to know that she have intermenstrual bleeding or post coital bleeding intermenstrual bleeding that occurs in any female and post coital bleeding you should ask if someone is sexually active dysmenorrhea there are some investigations that include most important one is high vaginal and endocervical swab then transvaginal ultrasonography diagnostic laparoscopy and ultrasound guided hysteroscopy in transvaginal ultrasonography there will be enlarged uterus or heterogeneous texture of uterus that is useful to detect endometriosis and adenomyosis now uh diagnostic laparoscopy should be done into the patient who have the history of endometriosis or who have normal swab and ultrasonography but have persistent symptoms or those patient who want reassurance that their pelvis is normal or not uh in primary dysmenorrhea diagnostic laparoscopy is not recommended diagnostic laparoscopy is only be recommended if someone have these three of conditions and ultrasound guided hysteroscopy is uh, advised in the patient who have cervical stenosis
Now the treatment of dysmenorrhea includes some options on which most important one are NSAIDs that are most effectively used uh, for the treatment of pain most important one are naproxen ibuprofen and mefenamic acid other than this we go for hormonal contraceptives that include combined oral contraceptive pills and progesterone combined oral contraceptive pills are not much effective for the treatment of dysmenorrhea but progesterone are important as they cause the anovulation and stops menstruations so they includes oral desogestrel and parenteral medroxy progesterone other than this we go for levonorgestrel intrauterine system that is intrauterine device that also releases progesterone and it is effective for the treatment of uh, endometriosis and adenomyosis then lifestyle changes are very much important that <clears throat> improves the dysmenorrhea that includes low fat diet high vegetarian diet and exercise due to exercise there are there is improving of blood flow into pelvis that relieves from pain then heat packs heat packs are old fashioned but still very effective almost equal to nsaids then there is gnrh analogs gnrh analogs are short term uh, used as uh, when we are planning for hysterectomy so before hysterectomy we go for gnrh analogs that specially stops fsh and lh release due to that there is the um, decrease in estrogen and progesterone so anovulation and uh, there is the amenorrhea occur before surgery so we use gnrh analogs for short period of time if we are planning for hysterectomy uh, it is short term and not first line treatment because it result from hypoestrogenic state then the most effective treatment is surgery we go for surgical laparoscopy or uh, adenolysis or endometriomas uh, drainage of endometriomas or any surgery for example hysterectomy that uh, can be done uh, for the treatment of dysmenorrhea so this is all for dysmenorrhea hope you liked the video please remember me into your prayers thank you so much allah hafiz